ethics and morality grow over time. Those who refuse to grow are holding humanity back. Same thing with education. You learn more over time, so you grow with that information, or you stay stuck in place. Ladies and gentlemen, dear audience, members of the jury, opponents and classmates, under these soft and emotional rhythms, here I am, I greet all of you, thrilled, blessed and honored to be among this awesome audience. It is indeed an honor for both teams, I presume, to be here today, representing the whole school in such an incredible event, the final. On our hands today, a topic that might have been controversial for quite a long time in the world, but in vain. Ethics and respect should be redefined according to the new generation. Now, before I start digging deeper into the topic, allow me to start by defining some of the main and important words you guys might need to know today. To do so, let us all play a game together. Spot the seven differences. Except here we do not have seven, but millions if not billions of differences between our ideas and theirs. One, respect. According to our personal beliefs and to kidshelpline.com, respect means that you accept somebody for who they are even when they're different from you or you don't agree with them. It doesn't have to come naturally, it is something that you develop progressively. Now, respect, according to them and to the old generations, means respecting the elders. Respect your parents, your grandparents, old people, and no, there is no end. That is all. Let's just respect old people, especially men, and literally forget about everyone else. Now, we say let's respect everyone in the world who deserves it, no matter how old or different they are. Two. Ethics. According to us and to the BBC, ethics is a system of moral principles. It affects how people make decisions and how they lead their lives. Now, if I follow your logic and the proper definition of ethics according to the old generations, then what are you girls doing over here? Expressing your opinions in front of people, in front of men? How, oh, how dare you? Isn't it a, isn't it shuma, isn't it an ethical? Pardon me, but for your own sake, we shall redefine ethics according to the new generation. Um, hold on, my bad. I just realized that I've been talking to you all for a few minutes, and yet I still haven't formally introduced myself to you all. Hello. Good Nachmittag. My name is Immanuel Kant, and I was a German philosopher who became one of the most influential of all modern thinkers. I shall be dead by now, but somehow I find it my duty to come up here, correct some mistaken knowledge, and enlighten you guys. Now, according to my book, I personally always implied that we ought to change morally. I said, and I quote, a change of mentality is an exit from evil and an entry into the good. It is the pitting off, yes, uh, it is the pitting off of the old human being and the pitting on of the new one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's something quick to think about. Through the generations, the ethically right thing to do has shifted dramatically, and it also differs from culture to culture. Segregation, for example, was viewed as the right thing to do. Prohibition was based on an ethical standpoint. Monarchies were the correct way to live in Europe for thousands of years until one generation reevaluated that. And yet you are telling me that we shouldn't redefine ethics and respect according to this new generation. It appears that you guys are forgetting about something very important called human development. Thank you. Good and evil, two abstract concepts completely opposite from each other. One means the profoundly immoral and wicked, whilst the other refers to the moral, welcoming and pleasing. However, the line dividing good and evil right and wrong, virtue and vice, could only be distinguished through ethics. A set of concepts and principles that help us determine what behavior harms or helps our existence, according to Richard William Paul and Linda Elder. These two also stated that ethics is a standalone concept that should not be confused with behaving according to social conventions in their mini guide, Understanding the Foundations of Ethical Reasoning, published 1994. Now, allow me to fast forward time a bit to our modern era, the mighty 21st century. 
June 2013, the Ethics Resource Center published a study examining the differences in attitudes toward ethical issues among four generational groups, traditionalists, boomers, Generation X workers, and millennials. So traditionalists were described to be disciplined and uh, conformers and pragmatic individuals who manage to separate between their family and work lives. Boomers, according to the survey, are these self-centered people who do not appreciate feedback. They are also self-motivated. Generation Xers are said to be lazy, cynical, skeptical, desire a work-life balance with a flexible schedule. Millennials, on the other hand, lack basic literacy fundamentals. They, uh, they have short attention spans, not loyal to organization, demand immediate feedback and recognition, and expect to have uh, many... Yeah. Uh, do you know how many Zoomers, like uh, Gen Z, are there in the world? How many? How many Gen Z, our generation, are in the world? Well, I can give you the number. It's two billion people in the whole world. And you are making generalizations about how we are lazy on two billion people. Are you I, kidding me? I didn't even mention Gen Z here. I mentioned traditional. You said that we are lazy. No, and I was talking about uh, millennials, not Gen Z. You said Gen if, Z. No, I said millennials, Gen mm -hmm. Y. But if you paid enough attention, you would have noticed that. So even though this study focuses mainly on workplace ethics, we can clearly notice the downgrade in behavior between these generations, from disciplined, pragmatic, self-motivated individuals to lazy, skeptical, and cynical individuals who lack the basic literacy fundamentals and can't even be loyal to their organization. So while you claim that ethics should be redefined according to each new generation, I believe you did not pay enough attention to the behavioral corruption that resulted from this redefinition you're so wholeheartedly supporting. So how about I put it this way in order for you to understand where I'm coming from. Let's say you, dear members of the government, think that ethics and respect should be redefined according to the new generation. That means, in a way, you're grounding ethics and respect in the evolution of society. So let's say that our society, at one certain point of time, God forbid, evolves into one where cannibalism could become beneficial to our species or our race. Then following your judgment that says that our morals should be redefined to fit the era and generation we're living in, cannibalism could eventually become quote unquote good and morally right. Think about it, it's not that hard to understand. Ethics and respect are time independent. If they weren't absolute, then I assure you humanity wouldn't have made it this far. Thank you. Now, if I show you number six and turn it to my side, it would look like nine. Just because you are right doesn't mean that I am wrong. You just haven't seen the number from my side. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. According to Cambridge Dictionary, ethics would be defined as the, moral, uh, as, the, as the study of what is morally wrong and right. As you have seen, right and wrong are just uh, an illusion. They are perceptive and relative words depending on the point of reference in which one is thinking. So as soon as that point of reference shifts, think of it as a generation, right shifts to wrong and vice versa. Now moving on to respect, how it is understood is different for each generation, so we can by no means have a universal respect. For millennials and boomers, respect is uh, given to anyone who is an elder, but for Gen Z, respect is something that is earned through behaviors and respect. Um, in a nutshell, we can only take a decision today, expecting it to be right according to the present condition. But we will never be able to say if it is the right decision, as we have to wait for its Do results. I yes. Well, since you mentioned uh, parents and stuff, my parents have educated me to respect people, and they have educated me on ethics, and I feel comfortable with it. So, I want to change and embarrass your definition of respect, so tell me how can I do it? Uh, what did you say? I never mentioned that our parents were wrong in the uh, You the mentioned way. that definition and stuff. Yes. Yes, and I feel comfortable with what they gave us. So can you please give me how can I embarrass your way of respect? How do you define it? 
uh, for me, respect is not something that we are obliged to do for elders especially, but something that is how we say gained by the experiences and uh, by the behaviors we have and the intersection we have with people. So I don't see why I should do and follow what my elders did when they were probably wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what is considered as perfectly right at one point of time in history is considered as entirely wrong at some other point of time in history. Take Facebook, for example. It has, became an, uh, it has become an arena in part for what is wrong in the world, what is immoral. We see postings of senseless killing and poaching of animals and cruel and unusual punishment. The images stay with us. It gets to you. It gets inside of you and makes your gut feel empty and sick as you care about something that has nothing to do with your own family, as you feel for people on the other side of the planet. You wish you could rescue the world, or at least that little girl getting stoned to death in Palestine. You see, you don't want to admit it, yet you are supporting our position. You are yourself being part of this new generation, redefining ethics by caring and sharing and posting, because 500 years ago, wars were a law of nature, something that simply happened at the whim of the powerful. But after the World War II, there has been a growing sense that war should be justified, that there are right and wrong reasons to go to war. And now, here we are in the 21st century with the whole concept of war crimes, something that did not exist 500 years ago. And I believe that what you are doing right now and what we are all doing right now is the byproduct of the evolution of ethics. Now, sexuality must be mentioned too because it is a very new phenomenon that homosexuality and other types of deviant sexual behaviors that does not hurt others is considered right. Back then, perhaps more than elsewhere, it was considered actively bad and evil to practice homosexuality. And so the change to seeing it as something beautiful, a form of love among others, is a sea change indeed. It is striking how our ethics has changed from rigid moral structures to the more, uh, uh, thank you, to the more fluid thinking of how we think. Thank you. Ladies and Ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, admirable audience, dear opponents, good afternoon. I won't tell you how much of a pleasure it is to be here in front of you. Well, no doubt, indeed it is. But without further ado, I would rather start talking directly about our topic. Ethics and respect should be redefined according to the new generation. Well, just reading this sentence makes me feel uneasy, weird, strange, I don't know. But no worries, I'm here. I'm here to enlighten your path and show you that the same exact sentence should not happen in any kind of way. Well, let's start with one of the latest and biggest news that has been happening lately, and that has been spread all over the social medias. And let me say, I've been seeing that guy more than my family in the past week. Yes, you guessed it right, Cameron Heron, the hot, handsome, good-looking guy that has, been that has occupied all of the social medias and also people's mind. The same guy who killed two beautiful souls, a mother aged 24 years old and her daughter who's barely one year old. And we've suddenly seen people sympathizing with him, a criminal. And for a moment, I, I wondered, where's the respect for the, the two killed souls? The respect that we should actually show to them, to the father who has only been seen, the criminal being defended and respected and showing nothing towards his wife and daughter. Well, since our members of government are defending that respect should be redefined according to the new generation, then I wouldn't be surprised anymore if I see people defending and respecting criminals and blaming the actual victims. Well, that was the first. Here comes the second. Dear audience, did you ever have the feeling of punching someone when they interrupt you? Well, because if so, I can truly relate. Well, since I'm seeing some parents and some other people, I want to ask you something. When you were young, did you have the audacity to interrupt someone, either your age or older? No, but sadly we do. And no wonder why our teachers keep on telling us that we don't have conversational et etiquette, because each one is interrupting the other, we don't listen to them, not even respecting what they say. And since you're saying redefining, right? 
A PY. Yes. Uh, you are talking about how teachers are struggling with their students because they keep interrupting each other. Well, that is because of what we call generation gap. The difference between generations, and that is why um, two, different, two generations are not born to have the same mentality and the same point of view. The second thing you mentioned about um, Cameron, um, you said that uh, where is the respect for the two uh, kids? Well, we are respecting these two kids, and that is exactly why the law is there, and that is exactly why Cameron is right now in prison. I'm saying about what? About what you said about the generation gap, I didn't mention it. I said that our teachers are telling us to respect the conversational etiquette. And that's a thing that should be generalized with everyone. So, here, since you are redefining right, redefining respect according to the new generation, then, dear teachers, please, please do not get offended. If, some, if one of your students interrupts you, or while you are explaining the lesson, or while you're talking to someone, please do not get offended. It's a new way of showing respect. <laughs> and ironically, we keep on wondering why our society is going downhill. Anyways, ethics. Beautiful are the people who have it, since we're missing it nowadays as well. And as Ahmed Shawqi said, Guess it says it all. If ethics are gone, people are gone. If ethics will change, our origins are changed. And here comes the question mark, if our origins change, then how are we? Thank you. The word we see that is, seems so insane is the result of a belief system that is not working. To perceive the word differently, we must be willing to change our belief system, let the past slip away, expense our sense of now, and dissolve the fear in our minds. William James said it better. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. According to the ethics course by Lumen Learning and according to William Coden, ethics are something which tells you right from wrong and good from bad. It is obviously true that each generation, when each generation dies or their influence wanes, the next generation redefines its ethics to an extent. A new generation has the right to respect and moral foundation to change the ethics of the past and in doing so, change the world for the better. <laughs> ethics and moral codes change slightly across generations. They always have. The, the speed of that change varies and currently it's pretty fast, which is causing some which is causing some reactionary response also to be expected. People don't seem to want change. The past generation has badly prepared the world for the next generation and had failed to prepare them for that fact. So if the next generation doesn't do something to change how the world works, it would only get worse. Ethics and respect are two, th two things that no, are I, in despair. No, I, please. Uh, greed, hunger, avarice, despair, employment, li uh, life being absurd, bad upbringing, corrupt police or government, discrimination, unfairness in judicial systems, super superstitious beliefs, and fake news. Why people today generally lose moral and ethics? Uh, first of all, some of you think that people in the past didn't have such things that as disrespect. There is a quote that Plato said. Where is the disrespect? Why does our young people disrespect our elders? And this was said 2,050 years ago. The problem is now with our current generation, it has always been a thing. So don't blame uh, our current generation and uh, see who you can blame. Ethics and respect aren't a set of rules. They are a way of living. Right and wrong change over time. The best examples are genocide, slavery, rape, etc. Genocide was very common in ancient time. Tribes or groups routinely did, must, were even celebrated, such as the Zulu in South Africa. Slavery, like genocide, was part of humanity, practiced on every part of the earth. It had been ethically acceptable by different groups at different times. The institution was made ethical until a new generation came along and changed it. Rape, in most cases, would incur blame and punishment on the victims, especially marital rape, since women were treated like objects and were considered men's property. 
ethics and values evolve over time. And that's as it should be because circumstances change. If you think the above is wrong, then I suggest you reread your history books and see the patterns of evolving moral codes. At some point, something will have to give. Situational ethics are fraud upon at a one-on-one -on -one level. But what about when you are talking about the future of mankind? To use a military metaphor, you are always going to lose some battles in order to win a war. That is, sacrifices have to be made. Age does not automatically grant wisdom just because a person is Dear audience, dear government, ethics and respect are what defines the rules that we follow in society. They are what makes us civilized, what separates appropriate behaviors from inappropriate behaviors. So we'll understand that uh, redefining respect wouldn't be a small deal, respect and ethics. Uh, throughout history, uh, communities have evolved, and as the members of the government have said, uh, ethics have evolved with them as well. Ethics have the role to show us what is right and what is wrong. And that's the reason of its importance. But it cannot be redefined because it's based on two things that cannot be changed, law and religion. For obvious reasons, law is, uh, religion isn't to be redefined. And it goes the same way for law. Redefining law would mean redefining the roots that builds our modernity and our civility. Redefining law would be dangerous for society. And I don't think that the new generations neither have the right or the possibility to do so. Of course, I believe that there are always some good small changes to be made regarding ethics. But these changes... The UI. Yes. Um, you are talking about religion, which is not supposed to be mentioned in our debate. And two, you um, said that... Uh, uh, you were talking about how um, you were talking about what is the wrong and the right thing. Now, what is wrong for you might be not wrong for me. So, how can you define what something is wrong and right? Well, first, I'll stop you, please, because uh, uh, you're talking about morals, ethics, and the morals aren't aren't the same. Ethics concern a society, a population, while moral uh, is uh, about an individual and his own experience. And uh, secondly. Uh, I think you uh, talked first about how I cited religion. Why I didn't cite religion, I said that uh, religion can't be changed. And as, as ethics are based partially on religion, so I must cite it. So uh, excuse me for uh, citing some uh, necessary things. Thank you. Uh, I'll continue. So uh, as I said, there are always uh, some uh, good small changes to be made regarding uh, uh, ethics, but th these changes never define it. However, for respect, it's a little uh, more complicated and uh, less obvious. There's also a huge problem regarding uh, respect. That's that our new generation lacks respect. We can't deny that. Today, you can't cross a street without at least hearing someone cussing or swearing. And most people don't even understand what respect really is. So please, members of the government, can you please tell me how people can you... Are. Yes? Well, here is a quote for you. What is happening to our young people? They disrespect their elders. They disobey their parents. They ignore the law. They write in the streets, inflamed with wild notions. Their morals are decaying. What is to become of them? This is not from a current uh, person or from a current generation. This is what Plato said 2,050 years ago. So the concern about declining morals did not start with our current generation. Today's young people will grow older and repeat the words of Plato in all earnestness when their hair starts graying. Thank you. Well, I didn't uh, understand, but I'll respond to you that, uh, uh, as you said before, there's a generation gap. So uh, that respond to it. Wasn't that your question? You said the generation gap. Well, well I'll continue. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, as I said, uh, respect. There's a huge problem concerning respect. That's our generation's. La Thank you.
Good evening, dear audience. A couple of days ago, the United States celebrated 4th of July, its independency, and many would argue that there really isn't much to celebrate. And you know what? We agree with them. Because problems like sexism, uh, like sexism and racism and hate against indigenous people still persisted after 1776. And all of those are problems that were installed by ancient ethics. And you see, my teammates and I have absolutely nothing against people who would like to celebrate the uh, independency of their countries even though the United States is in and of itself a product of colonialism, but choosing to ignore the hurt, the trauma, the genocide, and the hate that came after it is simply privileged, which is exactly why we believe today that uh, ancient ethics should be redefined according to the younger generation, because not doing so would be selfish, ignorant, and against evolution. Do you want to talk about um, cultural appropriation? Let's talk about cultural appropriation. How many actors have you seen painting their faces black to depict black people? How many rappers have you seen using the N-word in their songs inappropriately? How many people have you seen sporting cornrows and dreadlocks even though they absolutely have no right to? Do you want to talk about uh, slavery? Let's talk about it. It's true, slavery was never ethical. However, talking about it was considered as unethical because you're siding with the weak race. Do you want to talk about LGBTQ plus rights? Let's. People, L LGBTQ plus people are illegal in 71 countries. And in 11 of those countries, it's passable of a death sentence. Do you want to talk about women's rights? Let's. Can you believe that there are countries who only recently allowed their women to get a driver's license? Let me give you some food for thought. Ethics allow men to make decisions about women's body without taking said women into account or their opinion or what they have to say about those rights. And yet, you still have the audacity to come here and tell me that ancient ethics shouldn't be changed and they're perfectly fine when they do not touch up on topics like this. People who came up with those ethics, people who came up with these codes are probably already dead or on the verge of dying. Let's talk about respect. Respect should also be tackled and redefined. And there is absolutely no reason why the younger generation shouldn't redefine it unless they're scared of being uh, beaten to, to a pulp by, ancient, by older people. There is a distinct difference between respect and fear, which is exactly why we should get to redefine um, respect. Respect shouldn't only be given to people that are cisgender or hetero or that are white or that are rich. P uh, respect should be given to all people of all kinds, of all race, of all gender, of all preference, of all, um, of all preferences, of uh, all ages, regardless of who they might want to be or who they love or what color they are. Respect should be earned. Boy. Yes. Well, uh, you're, I see now that you're talking more about uh, racism. And uh, as you said in the beginning of your intervention, uh, racism and slavery were uh, um, considered normal back there. Yes, you said that. I said racism and slavery. No, not racism. I said slavery. Slavery. It was never uh, slavery. Considered Sorry. Racism, <laughs> slavery was never considered as ethical. However, speaking up about it was considered unethical. Well. That's, uh, that's part of uh, racism. When uh, black people don't let white people uh, or the inverse, uh, uh, not, white people don't let black people uh, talk about racism is, uh, well, that's racism. Yes, I said slavery was never considered as uh, ethical, but speaking up about it was unethical. I don't see your point. Well, since you want to redefine respect and ethics, uh, can you tell me your new definition according to uh, you, as you were uh, from the new generation, too. Uh, in regards of what? What do you want me to redefine? I, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dear opponents, since you talked about men and women, well, why are men and women are all around just just want to bed each other in the name of love that dies out after uh, that dies out after after so many of the beddings, uh, and they reach out for new partners to sleep with? Where are the ethics and morals of the past? Uh, where is the respect that? people that old people used to have, or am I just too backward and overthinking? Well, I would like to start my intervention by giving you the real definition of respect. And you'll see that there is no difference between my respect and duty, uh, leader of oppositions, and even our opponents. Well, respect is politeness, honor, care shown towards, towards a person or something that's, that is considered important. And 
And, uh, well, does this definition differs from one to another? Does someone consider respect as something else other than this? I don't think so. And for ethics, according to the dictionary of 1972, um, Ethics are a set of moral principles and a theory or system of, of moral values. And according to the 2021 dictionary, uh, ethics are principles or values of conduct governing an individual or a group. Let me ask you, dear opponents, do you, it, it's, has the definition of, risk, of ethics has changed? No, it hasn't. And it's, it isn't real even what you are defending. And I have all the resources for that. Uh, such as um, Drinking Institute, American Heritage Dictionary, Collins Webster's American English Dictionary, Collins and Abridged Thursdays, and the list goes on. The dictionary sees otherwise. I see otherwise, and all of us see otherwise. And if you see that there is a difference between, uh, there, is, there is some difference between the definition of ethics and respect from now and the past, well, show us, because, sh show us, and please, um, focus on the definition, not behaviors, because behaviors, because if I know the, the definition of respect, I can behave like as I want, I would express it as I want, because like, for example, Korean people, they kneel down as a respect, and we don't, but respect is one. Uh, and no matter where you live or in which century, and believe me, as we say, if it's real, it would never change. Ask your parents, your grandparents, why is this generation, uh, why is this generation? Uh, why is this generation have a lot of like deals with ethics and respect? Uh, how it deals with them? Like, um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, they know. <laughs> ah, yes. How this generation like deals with them? Like. But, but excuse me, you'd say that old people know nothing and their respect and their uh, ethics are different, right? Or you'd seem, say like you said, uh, well, we are in the 21st century. Well, 21st century, also the, the pharaohs say, used to say we are in the 13th century and look at them now. Well, <clears throat> As we say in our, uh, or let's not go too far to actually to centuries. You members of the jury, you are teacher, and you realize the difference between old students and actual students. You, actual students, like as we say in our dialects, but because like, uh, and as Leopard said, nowadays uh, in my generation you didn't talk back. You know when to talk. And, uh, and went to be quiet. All it took was a stare or a look, and you said, still, now, nowadays, if you look, or my, uh, you, might, uh, you might get a reply from a child, tell you, why are you looking at me like that? Or hit me, and I'll call the police. And that's how it goes. So if we change our, if we redefine our ethics and our respects, we redefine also the limits. And if we redefine the limits, if we redefine ethics and respect according to any generation, then the limits will be exchanged, will be expended too, and then fear the future because it will be chaos. Thank you. It is indeed such a beautiful drama that my dear opponents are bringing over here, but too, ba too bad, this is a debate tournament, and I'm afraid you cannot convince me with your own opinions and stories, because I still cannot see any absolute and actual uh, arguments, however. Uh, one, the leader of opposition, I'm still waiting to hear your point, because uh, until now you still haven't given the definition of ethics, neither respect, and all you've been talking about is mutual respect. Two, the deputy leader of opposition, the two examples provided were indeed great, but you said um, that, it, uh, that uh, redefining ethics and respect is not the right thing to do. Well, allow me to say that it is the right thing to do. We are not here fighting the old generations, but we are working on building in the new ones. Three, the member of opposition, um, you talked about generation gap. Well, might as well side with us. Thank you for saying that. I will just ask you to, um, just following the example you gave, no, thank you. <laughs> Hello. 
Well, just to clarify, Mrs. Prime Minister, I clearly cited my de own definition of ethics if you have paid enough attention. So I think that the misconception you have is that the issue is never the definition of ethics in respect. The issue is the way people adhere to ethics in respect. So it is humans who have become corrupted, not their values. The new generation needs to realize this and should try to reinforce ethical standards instead of redefining them. Be kind and do not hurt others. Be honest. Adhere to truth, equity, integrity, kindness, and compassion, and ethics and respect will be hail and hearty in no need of no redefinition. Thank you. Um, your deputy leader of opposition mentioned that she liked the definition of respect her father uh, made her learn, and she asked me for my own definition, and as you also, I disagreed with her. And if there is anything we disagree on, even in the slightest degree, our ethic will differ, perhaps slightly, but still different, and definitely non-universal. Universal rules means that there is no exception, but in our apparent near-infinite universe, there is always an, an exception. Uh, for your member of opposition, no, for your uh, opposition whip, we never said that old people weren't smart, but there is evolution and how we should adapt to it and is why ethics should change. Um, uh, for your uh, member of opposition, as you claim ethics is not a fixed entity and nor is it biologically inherited, if anything, we are not naturally ethical subjects, we are more inclined to ensure our survival and anything beyond that is being something well, dear uh, Prime Minister, you said that we didn't convince you uh, with our arguments, but neither did you, because I can't see any constant argument here. Anyways, well, hey, I'll give, I'm about to give, uh, to share with you, dear audience, a quote that will show you what my, my teammates and I were trying to say from the very beginning. Anyways, here, don't shift because fashion has shifted. Don't move from the original ethic you have, the original reasons. They are part and parcel of you. Now, according to this quote, if we redefine and change ethics, then we are redefining and changing our origins, something that is part and parcel of us, which leads us to say that we are also changing our identity. Don't you think so? Thank you. Dear opponents, are you seriously trying to romanticize, romanticize respect and relationships from all generations? Did you, are you even living in this world? Woman should not work. Woman, fake obliviousness. Woman should serve her husband. This is just the pick of the bunch. Husbands couldn't even beat their wives with anything thicker than their thumb. Children should be seen but not heard. Is this really the perfect world you want to live in? Well, I don't think so. And uh, what you said about our arguments since you're talking, just ask your parents if uh, their teachers used to tell them the same thing. And they would say the exact same thing, that their teachers used to t tell them that they're the worst generation. So the problem is not with our current generation, as I said before. And anyone who wants to keep the status quo in such matters has a lot of explaining to do. Not those who want to change this thinking. Thank you. Uh, well, first I want to present my apologies to the government whip for interrupting you. And uh, uh, for the prime minister, uh, when I said generation gap, I was just responding you with your own example. Uh, member of the government, no, you are defending the woman's right, not the ethics. And we never said that our uh, parents or grandparents' generation were uh, totally perfect in terms of ethics. And uh, what you just talked about is woman right, wo women's right, not ethics. It's completely different. Thank you.
leader of opposition. Uh, she talked about, you talked about a study, and in your study you cited cynicism and skepticism as bad traits. I don't necessarily agree with you. Cynicism and skepticism are quintessential to evolution. The member of the opposition uh, cited, a relig uh, cited religion as an argument. Well, I would invite you to reread the topic. This isn't a religious debate, and you can't use religion as an argument because not everyone practices the same religion. Uh, the uh, deputy leader of the opposition talked about the situation of Cameron. I don't necessarily remember his last name. Next time you want to cite a story as an argument, make sure you cite the entire story, not the part that benefits you. It's true, there are a couple of people who sided with him and said that, they ha that he shouldn't go to prison, but there are also a horde of people who disagreed with them and who are spreading awareness and trying to actively get him into prison. And yes, he is into prison now. Uh, what else? Uh, yes, the... Actually, dear audience, our debate is already clear enough because we already live in the consequences of what our dear opponents are defending. And the biggest consequence is that the pe people, on, uh, in particular this generation, if they had some respect, they, they, sh they would have respected the measures taken by the government to stop the spread of the virus. And the, biggest, and the world's biggest issue, biggest problem would have ended long time ago. Thank you. Now for the certificate award, and I would like please to call uh, Kinza Ghannan. Aya Konda. Maryam Buria. Sumaya Bouyer. Ilias Ramadan. Malak Khula. Zainab Sidi Haydam. 